Well, good morning and welcome again to another broadcast of Internet Radio on the show Down to Earth but Heavenly Minded. And I'm your host, Erbrish. And today we're going to be continuing on in some articles that were written by Samuel Redout. And this one is entitled Second Generation Christians. You know, we all worry about our children, even their children's. Uh, so it would be our children's children. <laughs> and we uh, just wonder if they're going to continue on for the Lord or if they're even going to know the Lord. And Samuel Riddout started this article out with this scripture out of Judges 2 and verses uh, 7 and 10. And this was after Joshua, the book of Joshua, and all his uh, deeds. And it says, The people served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua. And there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the work which he has done for Israel. This happens so often that even if you bring your children up in the ways of the Lord, they, it says they will not depart from it. But there are some that do depart from it and some that uh, just don't follow in the footsteps of their parents or their grandparents even though they followed the Lord all their lives. And this is uh, very heartbreaking to those that know the Lord and know that their offspring are not following the Lord. Joshua was a man that lived in the holy presence of God. He was a man whose soul was completely taken possession by God or for God, and therefore it was uh, a simple thing for him to take possession of what was his. Let God capture my soul, and I will want to capture everything for him. Joshua was a man of God. Joshua, you know, went into the sanctuary when Moses was still alive, and he was the successor of Moses. That would be good to do a character study of the book or, or the man of Joshua. But Joshua represents not only, you know, the energy of the Spirit of God, making Christ our leader, but the man of faith, too, that takes hold for God in living faith. The elders uh, in Joshua who knew God, who followed him, held the whole nation together as long as they lived. It is in the mercy when God has such persons to hold fast his saints in, in alliance. But we have no Joshua now we see that Joshua had no successor. I believe he represents the, uh, the apostolic spirit in the church. Look at the times of the apostles. Paul and the other apostles held the saints together, and the church was preserved from opening and public failure uh, by the apostolic power uh, that was in their midst. So during that time, uh, they held the church together. But the apostles, excuse me, but the apostles all died and left no successor. The second generation 
of the of any movement in the is in the time of failure israel under joshua and the elders were faithful outward at least and living in the fear of god but the second generation came in people who had not seen the work of the lord who had gotten the truth from the elders uh, at second hand they had not come right down to them from god but they had learned from the an indirect way and add and might i add in an intelligent way rather than in the heart uh, or in an intellectual way not in the heart you know that happens so many times we tell our children about the lord and we got it firsthand from our parents or our grandparents or where we got it or even from the word of god but they don't believe our word and they don't trust in what we say you know how easy it is for the second generation of any movement to have truth in their head but not in their heart you have all these truths on your bookshelf you can buy them for a few dollars but it is one thing to pay for things out of your pocket and another thing is to pay for it out of your soul it is one thing to get into your head and another thing to get into your heart and it was one thing for joshua and the elders the men of living personal faith to take hold of things and quite another for the generation that followed after them uh, and to do the same thing well brothers there was a time when the spirit of god sounded at the midnight cry behold the bridegroom cometh with what power it took hold of souls and brought them out to meet the bridegroom how near was the glory how dear the lord and how small the world well think what blessings the spirit of god has revealed a glorious christ at god's right hand in heavenly in the church and all the precious truths that flow from and are connected with it it is one thing for us to talk about those precious truths but it is quite a different thing for having them brought home revealed to us by the holy spirit the elders have gone the first generation of the movement had passed away and we are raised in a room of our fathers and i ask you and i ask myself has it been merely something handed down to us from faithful men or have we had to do with god about these things it is between us and god have we been alone with him about him, about them or have we learned them because this is or that one has held and taught them beloved brothers learning and leaning are god's given gifts we can bless god for them but we cannot follow leaders saved as they follow christ we must follow the living christ and the power and the presence of the holy spirit <laughs>